Hells yes, it is finally here, Mentees. X-Men Shattershot, the oversized hardcover. So join me as I do an overview of this book, where it fits in, what the contents are, and let's take a look at that binding. Stay tuned. Okay, I think I was able to show how excited I am about this book in that intro. Because I am really excited about this. This is X-Men Shattershot. Um, this is a book that has a collection of comics that we like to call orphaned issues. We didn't think these were ever going to be collected in oversized hardcover, so it is freaking awesome that Marvel actually got this out. Um, it's an interesting spine, though. I'm not sure how I feel about the design of the spine. And interesting that they went with this shot of... I want to say this is Brian Steel Freeze with the layouts by Jim Lee. Marvel logo up at the top, and then the back with a little blurb as to what this is and the contents of the book. The book retails for $75, by the way. Now, let's talk about where it fits in. So, this contains a set of annuals. We'll, we'll talk about the content here in a little bit. That take place before reading the final issues of Jim Lee, which are collected in this omnibus right here. Uh, those are issues 10 and 11, the ones that Jim Lee did. And, so that's one thing to keep in mind because this is like where they go back to Mojoverse and this kind of kicks off that storyline with Mojo 2, the sequel. However, it can also be read after the events of Bishop's Crossing and Executioner's Song because this collects issues of X-Men, Adjective List. That is the second title of X-Men. There was Uncanny and then X-Men. Previously collected in this trade paperback, this is the skinning uh, or a skinning of souls. So this collects practically a lot of the stuff that's collected in here, with the exception of the four-part crossover annual. Now, let's take a closer look at this without the dust jacket. Okay, you get that image, that Jim Lee image, X-Men Shattershot again, and then the Andy Cooper image in the back, which also happens to be the cover of the trade. Okay, now let's get this open and talk a little bit about it. Hopefully not go on too long, but you all know how much I love to talk, especially when it's about X-Men. So this was a crossover event called Shattershot that took place during the, I wanna say it was like 1993, if I'm not mistaken, or 1992, I'm sorry. And it featured the writing of Fabian Iciesa. And it was pretty much a revisit to the Mojoverse. Mojo's back. However, he's trying to get dethroned by this other guy named Mojo to the sequel. And we are hoping to see Longshot in this. Oh, here, I do need to point this out because this is really interesting. The book itself is not drawn by Jim Lee. He did do the cover. This is annual number one. And then I'll talk about what the contents are of X-Men. Um, he did the layouts and then there's other people that did the finishes such as uh, P. Craig Russell, Brian Stilfries. This is actually Brian Stilfries. That's why I was talking about the spine right there. And who else? I think Mark Texaria does some. Adam Hughes. Yeah, there's Adam Hughes right there. Yeah, it's kind of interesting to see that. Greg Capullo. I think Greg Capullo has a couple of... Uh, Dan Pinotion. You can always tell his inks. Uh, there's Capullo. But it's pretty cool to see this, like, their art on top of Jim Lee's just layouts. And I'm not going to show the ending here. Here's the extra stories in the back. Uh, the pinups here by Greg Capullo. Tom Rainey. I love, love that little spread right there. I think that was a poster. Mike Mignola. Or Mignola. My Mignola. Oh, my gosh. One of these days. This beautiful picture of Rogue. Okay, okay, sorry. So, let's talk about the contents. The con contents of this particular book are X-Men. So, this is... Adjective list, so it's volume 2, uh, 17 through 24, X-Men annual 1 and 2, Uncanny X-Men annual number 16, uh, X-Force annual number 1, and then X-Factor annual number 7. Now, there's also a bunch of extra things, something that has never been reprinted in oversized format, and that is the X-Men, the Survival's Guide to the Mansion. Most of that stuff was drawn by Richard Bennett, and I'll showcase some of that. There's also the X-Men Anniversary Magazine, and a lot of stuff in here from the swimsuit special. So you could tell, as I flip through here, I wasn't talking about the artist, uh, like I said, the crossover event was written by Fabian Iciesa, who at the time was writing X-Men and X-Force. And we have art by Greg Capullo, Jay Lee, 
Joe Quesada. This is actually his first. Oh, there's pinups here by Joe Madureira. So there's some awesome pinups, if I'm not mistaken, here. No, nope, not this crossover. No offense to Brandon Peterson. Um, but this is beautiful artwork by Joe Quesada. This is his first work before he took over the title as of issue 87. And Greg Capullo. Oh my gosh, this is right after his stint on Quasar. Good guy. Then here's the future X Force characters. Oh my god, this brings back a lot of memories. Um, and yeah, this is the guy that went on to do Spawn and then eventually went on to do Batman with Scott Snyder. This is what his artwork was like at the time. I think the inks on this are done by Harry Candelario. Um, man, brings back a lot of memories because I remember my comic book shop forgot to hold back uh, this issue of X-Force for me. So I was missing the ending, the part four. And I was so pissed about that. All right, now we're getting into the issues of X-Men. This is back when Andy Kubert was the main artist on the book. So it, it shows the return of Lady Quan on. Um, actually, this is the first appearance of that character. And then also the horrible things that happened to Colossus's family. So let me see. We have Psylocke, right during the Acts of Vengeance, the original Betsy Braddock who was British and had purple hair, was changed into these this Asian Psylocke by Mandarin and Spiral. However, Fabian Nicieza, and I don't know if it was an editor or him, decided to retcon that and saying that, no, it wasn't that her body changed, but that her mind was swapped because there's a, the original Betsy Braddock's body and this uh, Psylocke here, the Asian Psylocke, is known as Quanon, Quanon, or Revenge. And then there's... Oh, yeah, that's right. This uh, little forward here of Survival of the Fittest. It's a little interlude leading up to events later on. I love all this this time of X-Men. Reminds me of my high school days. Now, during this time, I wasn't the biggest Andy Kubert fan, mainly because I don't think his art was polished. But by the time we get to issue 24, uh, 25, which is one of the last ones here, I think his art just really took a turn for the best. Like, it, it, it gets awesome. Here's all the Dark Riders. Here's that... Uh, issue with Cyclops and Mr. Sinister. Yeah, this is issue 24. I love this cover. It's, it's the Rogan Gambit cover. Inks by Matthew Ryan. I think Matthew Ryan really cleaned up a lot of his artwork. So this one is a prelude to the Uncanny X-Men 304. And it looks like the inks here are done by, I want to say, Bill Sienkiewicz. I don't know. It never really says because it says Andy Kubert and Company. Uh, annual number two is here. This is a guy I thought was going to blow up. This is Aaron Weisenfeld. He was the guy that drew issues of uh, Cable. Just like three or four. He had a very, you know, at the time, like a Jim Lee-ish kind of look to his artwork. Wasn't as detailed as Jim Lee, but it kind of reminded me of it. And then he went on. I thought he was really going to blow up when he joined um, Image. And he started doing the Team 7 book. Then we have the Scott Lobdell story. This is one of the few Scott Lobdell stories in here. And it's drawn by... This is a uh, young Ian Churchill. And then we get this book right here. This is the X-Men Survival Guide to the Mansion. Man, did I love this book. I must have read this, like studied this more than my damn chemistry and, and calculus uh, books. I was reading this. This came originally in a spiral looking notebook. Um, type of comic. It was the size of a comic book, but that's the way it originally came. This has never been printed in oversized format, so it's really nice to have this now. And I, I know a lot of people are like, oh man, that's just so much padding. That's why they added it, so they can make it $75, so they had enough material. That, but see, me like, like people like me that are completists, you damn right we love stuff like this. Uh, there's also the X-Men Avengers magazine, I think. This is, yeah, X-Men Anniversary magazine. So there was an X-Men Anniversary magazine and an Avengers Anniversary magazine because they were about to have this huge crossover called Blood Ties, which happens in issue 26 of X-Men. Uh, it's interviews with the creators. There's some pinups in here, too. Hey, random. Uh, a nice little piece of White Queen right there. Is that Wills Portacio, I think? Quesada, Alan Davis, and then the Marvel Swimsuit Special, which had been, this has been previously uh, collected before in that trade paperback. I was talking about this one right here, or some of this was rather. So, uh, Scylla, what's, what's going on? What's going on there? Man, I remember tearing some of these pictures up and hanging them on my wall. 
there was a Sylvester Storm that he did, and then he did a Rogue. Oh man, I was just in love with those characters. Here's some fake ads that they love putting, and then the, uh, they, yeah, they put these fake ads in the swimsuit issues, and then pinups, of course. And there's some nice pieces of artwork here. Uh, you got Greg Capullo, Joe Quesada. I want to say that this eventually became a poster. Jeff Johns, I think, is that who that is? Jeff Johnson, that's right. Mike McCone, Joe Quesada's poster magazine. I had so many of these hanging up on my wall. I would rotate them. Oh, this brings back so many me uh, memories. Here's the Richard Bennett uh, piece. He didn't do a lot after that, I don't recall. Not for X-Men, anyway. Brandon Peterson. Ken Lashley. Larry Stroman. That's a, that's Carlos Pacheco. I loved his artwork back then. Bart Sears. I remember getting these Wizard magazines. And this one right here was so badass with all the villains. Yeah, Deadpool was a villain back then. I mean, just Joe Quesada, Jimmy Palmiante, 1993. Sorry, I was looking at the date. Just takes me back. And then we have the covers of Skinning of the Souls. Uh, this is the back cover. And the Jim Lee cover that they did for this uh, particular volume also found in the Jim Lee Visionaries. Uh, the X-Men Annual Number Two came poly bag with cards because during that year, all the annuals of 1993 came poly bag with a card of the first appearance of this character. This character is Empyrean. Uh, spoilers: I don't think he ever showed back up again. Maybe in one or two issues, if I recall. The trading cards that were coming out at the time: Marvel Universe uh, Volume Four, and then X-Men had their own series. I had all these. Man, I had the little gold foil cards. Special cards, most of the stuff. I think that's Mark Pasella, Andy Kubert, Andy Kubert, Brandon Peterson over here. Yeah. Um, here's some more. As you could probably tell, I'm sorry, I'm just going on way too long. But let's look at that binding. As you could probably tell as I was flipping through here, it is sewn binding. So there is no gutter loss and there's that eye. Um, although mine's coming off a little bit right there, but that's just my copy, I'm sure. And now for my favorite part. It's been a long time coming, but welcome home, Shattershot. This is where I'm putting it. Hope you survive the experience. Now you can purchase this book from CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself in packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Cheap Graphic Novels Black Friday sale is continuing all through December, so there's still time to save up to 95% off thousands of books. Additional books will be added throughout the month, so be sure to check back often and stay tuned to CGN on social media to be the first to know when the new books have been added to the sale. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the contents of the book. I hope I did a good job explaining where it kind of fits in or where you can read it, but like I said, you can technically read it after all those books back there. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below if you've picked it up, if you went into it with a blind buy, if you bought it just because it's an X-Men title, much like me. I love to know all those comments and I love replying back. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Now we can also be found on Patreon and on Redbubble. And thank you so much to our existing patrons. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.